Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood immunologist, and if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering about Alzheimer's disease. You can go on 23andMe, you can spit in a cup for 30 minutes and find out whether or not you have an increased risk for Alzheimer's disease, and that is known as APOE4. So I'm going to tell you the difference between APOE2, 3, and 4, and then what it means to have APOE4 in your body. Uh, because people in America who have APOE4 have an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease, but people who live in Nigeria and have APOE4, they do not have an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. And I'll tell you how it works and what that means. So let's get started. So I'm going to draw for you all three of the different types of APOE molecules. There's APOE2, APOE3, and APOE4. Now APOE actually stands for apolipoprotein. So anytime you see lipid, you know it's talking about fat. So apolipoprotein actually just means it's a cholesterol carrier. Now believe it or not, you do need cholesterol in your brain because all of the outside of your cells, particularly neurons, are made up of cholesterol. In fact, your brain often generates its own cholesterol for you. So 75% of the population of the entire world has APOE3. APOE3 is considered neutral as far as risk for Alzheimer's disease. APOE2 is considered beneficial, and APOE4 is considered a risk factor. So I'm going to draw APOE2 here for you in green, and this is really what the protein looks like. So researchers have gotten the structure of APOE, and they turn into like these little U-bends, and then they all combine together and hold lipids or cholesterol for you. Now, 5% of the population has APOE2, and 20% has APOE4. So people who have APOE2 are very lucky. It basically means they're pretty much not ever going to get Alzheimer's disease. APOE3, as I mentioned, it's neutral, and APOE4 is a risk factor. So why? Why is APOE4 a risk factor? There's only two differences about APOE4, and these differences actually cause the, the U shape to kind of like pinch together. They're almost like if you could only use scissors that are halfway closed. It just doesn't work as well. They're really not as good at carrying lipids. And I'll show you why that's important in just a minute. I also want to mention that APOE4, I'm showing you that it's like short here. It's got a smaller bend than the others because of the protein structure. So 50% of people who have Alzheimer's disease have APOE4 genetics. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how the different APOEs, 2, 3, and 4, how they work together. So they are these little U-shapes, but when they all combine together, so if you have many different APOE2s, they can bind a ton of lipids, which are fats, and it's primarily cholesterol. They're going to grab a huge ball of cholesterol, and they're going to carry it around your brain. And that's a good thing because it can bring cholesterol to neurons to help them continue to function properly. It can also bring cholesterol to other cells of your brain, particularly the immune cells of the brain, microglia and astrocytes, and help them function optimally too. All right, so APOE3, I'm going to draw in the middle. It's still blue for color coding, but this one's carrying a little bit less cholesterol than APOE2. Um, APOE4, you might have guessed it, is going to carry the least amount of lipids or cholesterol. And this means a few things. Um, APOE4 is going to carry less cholesterol, so it's going to bring less cholesterol to the neurons in the brain, but there's a few other things that make it even worse than that. So APOE2 is the best. It's going to carry the most lipids, it's going to last the longest, APOE3 also lasts fairly long, but APOE4 actually breaks down really quickly and carries less lipids than the other one. And I'll show you why we should care about that. Okay, the big reveal. 
APOE2 is the best because I'm about to draw some amyloid beta for you. Amyloid beta is what causes plaques. And you can see APOE2 is sticking to it. It's going to stick to just so much amyloid beta. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the amyloid beta that's attached to the lipids or the fats, and it's going to actually dump them outside of your brain. APOE3 is fairly good at this. And APOE4 is very bad at holding amyloid. And as I mentioned before, it degrades rather quickly. So it's very bad at its delivery job. Um, so going off of that analogy, APOE2 would be more like Amazon's delivery, gets it there to you within a day. APOE3 would be more like UPS or FedEx. And APOE4 would be the poor post office on a bad day. If you didn't pay for any extra shipping or asked for hand stamped, it just takes forever. And I do want to also add to this what the Nigerian paradox is. The Nigerian paradox is basically that African Americans in the United States have an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease if they have the APOE4 gene. But people who live in Nigeria with similar genetic backgrounds don't. And it's thought that it's diet and lifestyle. People who live in Nigeria actually have lower incidence of cardiovascular disease and lower cholesterol than the average American. And these two lifestyle factors probably contribute to the fact that APOE4 can do its job better when your cholesterol is lower and your heart is healthier. So I have APOE4, you might too. I didn't want to leave you on a down note. I wanted you to know that you know, diet and exercise are ways to fight Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And if you want to know more, um, please hit like, subscribe, and leave me a comment about what other things you'd like to know about Alzheimer's disease. Stay healthy.